So on campuses across America, college students rioted. They forced the resignation of the president of Harvard. They occupied and destroyed a building at Princeton. The percentage of students identifying as Christian plummeted to record lows. Oh, I'm not talking about last week. I'm talking about the quarter century after our country's independence from 1776 to 1800. A poll taken during that time at Harvard discovered not one Christian believer in the entire student body. They took the same poll at Princeton, much more Christian place. They discovered two Christian students and only five that didn't belong to the so-called filthy speech movement of the day that was sweeping college campuses. That was our country, 1776 to 1800. So what changed? Well, let's talk about it. A verse I want to go to today, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. You might be familiar with the famous work by J. Edwin Orr on the power of prayer, and it's worth quoting. As he says, not many people realize that in the wake of the American Revolution, there was a moral slump. Drunkenness became epidemic. Profanity was ubiquitous. For the first time in the history of the American colonies, women were afraid to go out at night for fear of being assaulted. Bank robberies, theft were all a daily occurrence. The violence was skyrocketing. The Chief Justice of the United States, John Marshall, wrote to the Bishop of Virginia, James Madison, that Christianity, in his opinion, was, quote, too far gone to ever be redeemed. The famous Thomas Paine quoted Voltaire and said, Christianity in America will be forgotten in 30 years. So how did the situation change? Prayer. In New England, there was a man named Isaac Bacchus, who was a Baptist pastor. And in 1794, he sent an urgent plea for prayer to pastors of every single Christian denomination in the United States, back when ecumenical you know, efforts weren't exactly looked on with favor. But the Christians knew their backs were against a wall, and they adopted his plan until the whole country was kind of interlaced with a network of prayer meetings. They met monthly. They set aside the first Monday of every month to pray. And revival followed. Historians call it the Second Great Awakening. And of course, out of that Second Great Awakening came the whole modern missionary movement. Out of it came the abolition of slavery, really the public education system in many ways, Bible societies, Bible translation societies, Sunday schools, many, many more social benefits. So I would say that there's correlating evidence that prayer makes a difference, and there's lots of other examples. That's why the pastors at TLC meet every Tuesday for prayer. That's why the Santa Cruz County pastors are invited to meet every month for prayer. And so I'm inviting us all to pray. When you, when you see the wars, when you see the campus unrest, when you see the headlines, what do you do? Let's go back to that verse. It says, I urge you to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. This is good and pleases God our Savior. In fact, let, let's start today by praying the way the Lord taught us to pray. And if you know it, you can pray it out loud with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
You know, Jesus taught us to pray that way in the Sermon on the Mount, and this weekend at TLC, we start a brand new series going verse by verse through that amazing speech. I hope you can join us for the launch Saturday, 6 p.m., and Sunday at 9 and 11.